Hey everyone and welcome to episode 12 of our weekly Super Smash Bros. Ultimate News Roundup, which means there's only 14 weeks left until the game's release. But things are a bit different this week since both Andre and Ash are at PAX West. So instead, myself, John, and our special guest She Says will be going over all the updates from the Smash Bros. blog and elsewhere from the past week. So let's get right to it. And we'll begin the week on Sunday, day one, with the character overview for Ness. And the description reads, Ness has a variety of moves from long-range attacks using psychic powers known as PSI to short-range attacks with his bat and yo-yo. Ness can also unleash PK Thunder, a guided attack that can launch him like a rocket or help him recover. So yeah, Ness is back in the game, not too surprising. He's been there since the very beginning. But how are you liking the changes so far, guys? Well, one of the things that I saw right off the bat that I absolutely love is the down smash. Did you guys notice how when he uses the down smash over by the uh, the ledge, it actually drops over the ledge, essentially working mm -hmm. as like a uh, an edge guard? Yeah. Which, which is pretty awesome. I, I mean, I don't know why it hasn't been done before, but it makes so much sense. I'm actually kind of surprised that it hasn't been done before because it just seems like such an obvious thing. I don't actually use that Ness that much. I was kind of scared away from him very early on because of his <laughs> recovery. Figuring out PK Thunder as a kid was kind of rough. <laughs> oh, for sure. And a lot of the stages in the early games didn't really make up for it either, like Saffron City, if you were getting stuck between the buildings. So... There was a, a huge curve to, to using him effectively in the early games for sure. Yeah, it's going to be super weird to play on Saffron City and have an actual, like, functional Ness AI. It's just not going to feel right. <laughs> you don't know what to do with yourself. It's, it's weird. <laughs> Looking at mm -hmm. the comparison photo we have here showing how his graphics have been updated, and it's mostly the same. A few, of course, touch-ups and lighting engine fixes and stuff like that. I love how um, the Ness model in Ultima, you can sort of see the stitching on his shorts, which is like a really nice detail. Whereas I can't quite make that out in the Wii U version. But apart from that, he's a very simple character, looks more or less the same. But these simple characters really benefit from the new lighting system. Like, Ness in Wii U was quite a flat character. Whereas in Ultimate, you can really see how the different shades go across his body. His face is more than just one pale color. And he looks great, and you can even see a few more, um, a bit more detail on his hair this time around too, which uh, is sort of on all characters. But I think Ness benefits quite well. It's almost clay-like his hair, which is great because that's more or less what they were going for with the original art for Earthbound. So yeah, he, he kind of looks similar, but I love the, the, the subtle changes they've made to the model. I agree, and like to go back to the clay model comment that you made, uh, the fact that the colors are brighter too, totally harkens back to the original concept art. So, like, those are things that I really appreciate. I It's kind of funny how, with the original Clay model, though, he had, like, fatter, rounder features, but as he keeps going on through each Smash Brothers, it almost seems like he's getting more and more sleek in the face. A little bit. Yeah, I'm actually noticing that now. It's I guess they're just thinning him out. He's he's growing up. He's just growing up before our eyes. <laughs> yeah, he's following Pikachu's diet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I love most of all about Ness's inclusion in this, though? is that they added his uh, support characters into his final Smash. Yes, I was just yes. about to mention that. That is such a cool touch to have them there with him. And I don't know, I just, I love that little, like anytime, anytime you get more references to the original game and what they do, I'm all about. One of the things that always bothered me about Ness and Super Smash Brothers is that he never does the fuzzy pickles pose for any of his taunts or even his victory animation. And like, I was like, oh, maybe it's like a cultural thing that you can't really include that anymore. But then all of a sudden, Pitt has it as his victory animation. I was like, wait a second, why not Ness? <laughs> yeah, that, that's so weird. I also, I love, um, we have all the characters back for his final smash and then Jeff is back as an assist trophy. So we have the entire Earthbound party present in this game, and that is freaking awesome. Absolutely. Such a cool idea. I know. I think a lot of people are hoping that Ninten is going to be a, an Echo Fighter for Ness as well. Hmm. I've seen a lot of people... My problem with that is Ninten is very similar in terms of character design, mm -hmm. and I wonder how they'll be able to differentiate the two. I mean, I guess the, the shirt, but even the shirt's pretty similar. Yeah, you can almost just change his costume and there you go, Here, there's Ninten. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I actually really hoped for was Pooh, and that when you switch to Pooh, Ness becomes the support character in the final Smash. Ooh, that'd be that really would be cool. cool. I'm down. Like I'm, I've actually never played through all of Earthbound, so I'm not 
totally familiar with the characters, but they all look like fun uh, fun kids, so I'm totally down with any of them actually making it, in, making it in here as an echo. Who comes in quite late into the adventure too, so if I think he's like near the end. <laughs> he's quite a late addition to the game. So it is awesome that all the characters are here, because they, they could have very well just put Jeff in, because he's a more recognisable character. But I love how they brought him back as an assist trophy. And it seems like most assist trophies are coming back, so that's very cool as well. Well, let's go ahead and move on to day two, being Monday. And this time we got our breakdown of the new assist trophy of Rathalos. Uh, it says, This giant beast will appear when summoned, spreading its wings to create a powerful attack. Rathalos has fire breath and a roar that stuns opponents. Finding an opportunity to get an attack in can be difficult. And uh, so I've never played Ma uh, Monster Hunter, but I have heard of Rathalos quite a few times. And when I was doing the analysis of him, and I know this is mainly for because of his boss fight, not the actual assist trophy, but the boss fight against him looked pretty freaking cool because he has this one attack where he like launches on the back of his tail kicks his feet up and then just slams the uh, characters down. It looks awesome and I love how intimidating he is. He's way more intimidating than a lot of the other assist trophies we've seen. He's not realistic though, because in Monster Hunter it takes like an hour to, to kill a boss. <laughs> Whereas that's not gonna work here. <laughs> Do you have much uh, experience with the Monster Hunter series, she says? Not too much. I played a little bit of it on the Wii, never really made it to Rathalos, but the announcement of Rathalos is really interesting to me because it says so much about the modes that we haven't learned about yet. Because of the fact that when he was announced, it was an arena. It's not attached to any stage, but they mentioned that you get to fight him. So it's like, what, what exactly does that attach itself to, is what I wonder. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of debate there. Yeah, people think the mode is called Spirits. And we've seen both Dracula and Rathalos. And yeah, it's, it's very confusing. Um, they, they've specified that Rathalos is both an assist trophy and a boss character. So we, we've seen him in, in action as both of them. And he seemed to have a couple more moves as a boss. Like we see him flying in the background and swooping into the foreground. Whereas an assist trophy, he was just breathing fire and using his roar to stun opponents. So it seems like the two, the bosses and the assist trophy might have different properties. Obviously though we didn't see him for that long as an assist trophy, so maybe he does do all that stuff. But that would be a, maybe a bit too overpowered just as an assist trophy. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's just too... He's so big and avoiding him on certain stages, and if he can attack like he does in his boss fight, that'd be a little ridiculous. As he is now, I think that's probably the best way to do it. Just oh god, we need to get away from this guy. So he's, it's, it's going to be one of those things where he's super powerful when he comes out for you, but you can also potentially get around him and lay on the herd so you can get that extra uh, hit in for the new way they treat assist trophies, where if you defeat them, you get a, it gets counted as, as a KO and time attack. Or time mm -hmm. I love um, how we're getting more third-party assist trophies as well, because this is a Capcom character, and um, we didn't really have very many of those at all in Smash for Wii U. Whereas now we have Zero, we have Rathalos, and I'm sure there's going to be a bunch more. And I'd love to see like more like Street Fighter characters make it in this way, or like a Resident Evil character. I'd love to have like oh Ouroboros or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And I gotta say, Rathalos is definitely a fantastic fit for an assist trophy. You know, it's like the series is very popular in Japan, and uh, having no representation at all does seem kind of like a loss. But then again, all the characters that you play as in Monster Hunter doesn't really quite work as a Smash Brothers character, unless mm -hmm. you guys feel any different? I don't feel different, but um, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite did have the Hunter playable in that game as DLC, so I guess you could lift something from that, but I agree with you, that's not really, I don't think a Hunter is really iconic enough, the monsters are really what Monster Hunter is about, so yeah, I agree with you, she says. Yeah, I don't think it's going to get a playable fighter, I do wonder though if we'll get a stage, because it can't, couldn't be that difficult, because that's the thing, and actually at first seemed that Dracula was fighting on the actual Dracula's castle stage, but no, that's a completely new arena form uh, once you take a closer look. So I almost wonder if they can just do the same thing with Rathalos and just have a stage based on that, and I don't know, I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I, I would think so. I mean, it's, you know, the Dracula's castle stage, while it's different in the boss battle, it's still based off a stage in the game. So I can't, I can't see why they couldn't do the same thing for Monster Hunter, because we found out that that um, arena is based off Monster Hunter 4, I believe. So it'd be really interesting to see like more terrain or something, maybe have more monsters in the background or something, elaborate mm. on, on it more. Because as you say, Monster Hunter is a huge IP, and it's one of the largest in Japan at the moment. So it's kind of a waste not to have a proper stage to represent it. 
Mm-hmm. And it's been on Nintendo consoles for so long now. It's, it's kind of right. crazy. I, th- I think it makes perfect sense, and it would be really cool to just have like different monsters show up in the background and let the Monster Hunter fans get there like, ooh, did you see him? Ooh, did you see that? <laughs> that's, always a, <laughs> that's always a fun moment with, with those type of stages. But uh, as an assist trophy, I think Rathalos looks fun, but honestly, I'm more, I'm more interested in him as a boss than as an assist trophy. Yeah, there's a big yeah, tease same. going on there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and move on to day three of this week, which is Tuesday. And first up, we got some new music for the week, uh, which is the main theme from Yoshi's New Island, uh, which was rearranged by Shota Kageyama. Uh, now, according to Ash's uh, notes here, he is an independent composer who used to work for Game Freak, where he worked on Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Black and White, X and Y, and Origins. He's also done a few Smash arrangements, arrangements including the title ending for Super Mario World and Brawl, the Hidden Mountain and Forest for Zelda Link to the Past, Wii U 3DS, he did the Super Mario Brothers 3 medley and ends Castle medley, as well as the Quick Man stage. So he's quite good at this, and my god does it show with this rearrangement of Yoshi's New Island theme, because probably one of the worst aspects of Yoshi's New <laughs> Island was its soundtrack, and this song <laughs> is so freaking good. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh my gosh, like if you told me that they were going to add a new Yoshi's New Island song to Smash Ultimate, I would have told you to get out of town. But listening to this is so good. Now, they've taken one of Nintendo's worst soundtracks uh, in recent memory and actually redeemed it. Like This is a really good track. And listening to it, I, actually, I forgot it was from New Island. I, I just listened to the track. And I thought to myself, like this is really good. And I looked at the, the title name. I was like, whoa, New Island? Really? And it's just, it's just so good. <laughs> yeah, I, same. I didn't really like the music from the game, but every single track that has been announced for this game so far has just been stellar. Games I didn't even care about are just like, I'm like, okay, I'm actually like listening to this track ad nauseum and I never even played the game before. Same goes for this one. That's kind of the magic magic of Smash when you get that arrangement you actually hear these songs you weren't aware about before and hearing them or hearing them just arranged in a different way that... Well, in this case, just makes them so much better because I, I just remember the title theme of New Island being so ear grating mm-hmm. on the 3DS. And it's just like, ah, no, get it away. And to have it actually have proper instruments and just, I don't even know what he did to it. Just I'm just going to say magic at this point because it is, it's heaven on the ears in the comparison. It is so good. I want to see them take a stab at other tracks in the game. Like there's one that goes, um, da 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 da. <laughs> I want to I hear them make like a really epic version of that. <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> I want an epic remix of Tataka's theme. Oh, yes. there we go. Ah, oh, Tataka's medley. That'd Why be amazing. Hasn't that happened yet, actually. <laughs> Now's the best time to do it. <laughs> yeah, just sneak it in there somewhere. I'd love it. That wasn't the only thing that uh, update for Tuesday, as we also got a stage overview for New Donk City Hall. And according to the description, it says, This stage is based on Super Mario Odyssey's New Donk City. When a fighter touches a band member, their instrument gets added to the background track. Mayor Pauline also makes an appearance. So this is actually rather interesting to me, because that was one of the big questions, is we saw New Donk City Hall, and we saw the whole touching the band members to get their instruments added into it, but we weren't sure if it was only applied to Jump Up Superstar. And according to this description, it sounds like it's going to be any song that plays, which that's a lot of extra work to just sort of layer it in there as you touch uh, magi- uh, magicians, musicians. Harkening <laughs> uh, <laughs> back to the earlier comment. Exactly. <laughs> and adding in their tracks, like, do you think they're actually going to go all out like that? or that's Because that's what it seems to indicate. Or is it really just going to be for Jump Up Superstar? I certainly hope that's the case. That would be amazing. Um, because I'll tell you right now, and this is probably going to be the most unpopular opinion in, out of the entire discussion, <laughs> I don't like Jump Superstar. <laughs> yeah, really, I got so tired of that theme after about the 20th time I had to hear it. Uh, so... <laughs> But I do love the, the idea of the band, so if, if it can be applied to other tracks, which will definitely be featured in my track list for when I play the stage, that would be amazing. I would totally be for that. But like you said, it just like it seems like it's so much work. Yeah, one thing that confuses me is in the in the trailer we saw Ram Paul Lean start singing when you get to her. And I don't think that's going to work for many other tracks. Like, it'd be weird if you touch Pauline and then, like, a violin starts playing or something. Like, that just doesn't really work in the context. (laughs) She has an amazing voice. 
<laughs> Maybe she just kind of like does like a hum or, a, you know, like the ooh ahs kind of thing. But how amazing would it be if there was lyrics applied to like a whole, ge- like many generations of Mario tracks? I'd love to hear that. But again, that would be an un- unreal amount of work. It but works. if it happens, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> count me impressed. Your humming comment makes a bit more sense. I think maybe if she hums along to like Delfino Plaza or something like that, that is probably doable. If it's New Super Mario Brothers, she's got to work <laughs> out for it. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> My thought is, is probably not humming. She might just join the band and dance with them. Yeah, that, that makes sense too. Seems like the simplest solution, but... Hey, if they if they do have a kind of vocal track for it, even if it is just humming for every single Mario song in the game, because that's the thing. It's not just a set number of songs for New Donk City in this game. It's every single Mario track in the game, which makes this all the more impressive if it is like that. On the stage itself, I was kind of expecting an overview of every kingdom in Odyssey, like a, a flyby uh, tour of the game. So I guess I was a little bit disappointed to see it was just New Donk City. It is one of the most iconic stages in the game, but... I don't know, I, I kind of wanted to see like all the other kingdoms represented as well. Uh, were you guys sort of on the same mind wave, or did you were you kind of expecting this? I'm willing to bet that my mindset was on the same page as the developers, where I didn't even think of that as a, an opportunity, you know? But now that you say it, it's like, yeah, why why isn't the, uh, the Odyssey, like, <laughs> going to other planets? That just makes so much sense. But yeah, when the stage was announced, I just figured, like, well... There you go, New Donk City. Just in the same breath as like the Mario Sun- Sunshine stage, where it doesn't go to the other areas of the game, it just stays in the plaza, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, I just kind of like kept my mind in that box and just left it there. I wonder if it's because when development started, they didn't have the other stages yet, and they weren't sure which one's going to be more the most popular, and they... You always got the sense, even from the original reveal of Mario Odyssey, that New Donk City was sort of the centerpiece. Like, like check out this kingdom. So I wonder if it's a sort of a situation where they only had so much information to go on and they decided to just keep it focused on New Donk City Hall. Yeah, and also, if you think about it, it would be a little bit strange for the bandmates to follow you to other planets <laughs> as well. <laughs> hey, they showed up on the moon. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I think the stage looks pretty good. I, I like the idea of it going up and down the city hall. Uh, there's a there's this great camera pool where it looks like you're just plummeting down to the earth uh, while you're on the platform, and it, I I love elements like that where it makes it seem like you're falling, and it just, uh, just great background element, I think. Yeah, one thing that is missing though is a dinosaur because there is a dinosaur in oh, yeah. New Donk City. Where is he? <laughs> I want him. <laughs> yeah. That would be kind of awesome just a random T-Rex just runs across the stage every so often. Like, even when it's up in the air, he still just runs across the stage somehow. Just <laughs> finds a way. It needs to happen, especially for the people that never played Odyssey. They'll just be like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, man, that'd be wonderful. Or if, like, when you get to the top and there's, like, an 8-bit Donkey Kong or something like that, that would just be incredible. Oh, man. Oh, yes, please. If they went all out and had the festival actually go on in certain, like, certain times, like a special configuration, that'd be so cool. Well, some stages do that. We, we know uh, Moray Towers has, like, both the Splatfest version and the Day version. What if New Donk City has that, too? I mean, they probably would have said if it did, but if they had, like, a festival version and a daytime version, that would just be incredible. Oh, man, I'd love that. That'd be so freaking cool. And on Saturday nights, it's K.K. Slider instead of Pauline. There you go. (laughs) The best. The best. (laughs) It's actually kind of funny to think we got so many stages, but I think that there's only actually five new ones. Yeah, something like that. I I kind of feel like they're going to bring a few more. I mean, um, K. Rool doesn't have a stage yet, which it feels like he should, especially as there's no Tropical Freeze representation, which is a crime, and there's bound to be a few more characters, maybe a few more third-party characters, and they, they just have to have stages accompanying them. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we'll probably have maybe maybe 10 stages by the end? That's just a rough guess. Yeah, I feel like we're going to have a few more. Mm-hmm. I think it makes sense, and you're right. Every, every third-party character that's become playable has had their own stage as well, so... It's going to happen. Well, let's go ahead and move on to day four, Wednesday, where we got the character overview for Peach. Uh, it says, The Super Princess. Watch out for her powerful kicks while she's airborne. Using her down special, she picks vegetables and throws them at her opponents. Sometimes she even gets items, like a bomb. Which, did she do that before? <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, did she? Did okay. she? Okay. Wow. <laughs> did not happen to me that often, so I was like, was that a feature? Right. Very, very rare, but it would happen where she would either pull out a bomb or uh, a Mr. Saturn. Right. Oh, I missed that somehow. <laughs> yeah, I never, never had that happen that often. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to guess that you guys didn't have friends that played her very often. <laughs> not really. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I try her out every so often, but I didn't like stick with her, and I always forget to use the turnip attack because I was so busy beating him up with a frying pan. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Peach looks wonderful in this. She uh, looking does. at this comparison, like the way her dress, it just like it pops way more than in Wii U. It's incredible. And I love how only parts of her dress reflect as well. Like if you look at the top half of her, it's quite a dark color. And then we get down to the bottom, it starts reflecting a bit more. So it's like there's different materials on these layers, and that's a really nice touch. You can also sort of see like little ripples in her dress as well, like where it's sort of folding around, and that's just a really cool detail too. I can totally see that, and um, there is one big thing I want to talk about with Princess Peach, you guys, and uh-huh. that is that Toad uh, seems to have manned up a little bit <laughs> for her down B. <laughs> have you guys seen that yeah, yet? Yeah, I have. Yeah. That is so good. Like, just that little <laughs> Toad coming out like, no! <laughs> Don't hit when you look back at the, the old version of Toad, like, that didn't make... What, 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 what is that? Like, <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> He's scared for his life. That's what's going on there. <laughs> Tell me this crazy <laughs> woman has kept me in her pocket for weeks. Get me out of here. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> what a nightmare. But yeah, I do like that element that, yeah, Toad is out to protect her this time. <laughs> yeah. I-, I love it when it's like a really menacing character as well. Like if Ganondorf does his, his, his full um, standard B charge and then Toad just comes out and just goes, nah, and just, <laughs> just hits him back. <laughs> Is it confirmed yet if, if uh, Toad's still going to belch at people when he gets hit? Because <laughs> now that there's this new animation involved, I'm very curious how that's going to look after like you know he has like this determined, heroic look on his face. You hit him and he just belches at you. <laughs> that is what he's doing, right? It's like fungi, I guess fungi so. burp. I, n- I always wondered that, but I never looked closely enough to really determine it. It was just like, maybe I don't want to know. <laughs> it's Toad's iconic belch. <laughs> the big question about Peach, though, that has not been answered yet, is what her final smash is going to be. Because it was always the, what I, I forget what it was called, but basically she put everybody to sleep and then had a bunch of healing Peaches drop down around her. And I could maybe see that happening for her, but I also could see it being changed in some way. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, all, all Final Smashes are kind of more cinematic now, like more to the point, whereas Pe- Peaches is the opposite of that. I mean, she puts everyone to sleep and slowly goes around collecting fruit to eat and then just hits them. So I imagine they're going to do something more. I really do hope it's different because it doesn't really harken back to anything and I finally have an opportunity to talk about this little nugget of information. How come <laughs> this is what is fi- Peach's final smash and not Jigglypuff's? Oh my god. That's such a good qu- what? Yeah, that's such a good question. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> this has been bothering bothering me for years. I don't get it. It's like Jigglypuff turns uh, big. That's that's her final smash, I believe. Yeah, yeah she yeah, just gets it. big and blasts everybody off, I guess, if they get too close. But it's still like, that's not what I... Th- I mean, yeah, Jigglypuff's a balloon, but... Not exactly what I think of when I think of Jigglypuff and putting people to sleep. That's not what I think of with Peach. Honestly, what I'd love to see her final smash be is when she got her voice cursed in Superstar Saga. So every time she talks, like these like crashing down notes uh, come out of nowhere. That'd That's a great idea. I'd also like to see um, her and Tiara in the Odyssey and like just crash down on the stage or something like that. Ooh. Because I, I, loved, I loved that at the end of Odyssey and it would be, be amazing to see a few more references to that. I want to see what, I wanna, I wanna see what happens to Peach after that game, like maybe a sequel or something, but I'm getting off track. But I, I'd just love to see that kind of cinematic Final Smash for Peach. Actually, she should have Tiara as a, one of her taunts like Mario anyway. Yeah, that'd be great. Not a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, I, I do enjoy playing Peach on occasion. It's, she's never one of my go-to, but it's just like, yeah, we'll do something a little different here, and she's usually pretty good. I love the, I mean, the float is amazing <laughs> for recovery. Yeah. Back to the um, the final smash point, mm-hmm. Daisy is her echo now, and it would be kind of weird for Daisy to have that final smash as well. So it's got to be something that the two of them have in common. And what if it was something to do with sports? Because that's pretty much what Daisy's known for. Like what if she had like all of her sports gear and just hit everyone with like a golf club, a pan, like, all of that at, at the same time somehow? I know that they'll probably share Final Smash, which is really disappointing because honestly, if you're going to have Daisy in a Super Smash Brothers game, this is like the only opportunity you have to have Tatanga 
the main villain from oh, Super Mario yeah. Land <laughs> as a final <laughs> <Yes>. smash. <laughs> oh, I'd love oh. that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Could just come down in his spaceship and shoot down people. It'd be great. Yeah. Uh, I really want like a Mario Land stage now, like just like a black and white one, similar to, to, um, to 3DS's Dreamland. Ooh. Oh, that'd be so good. That'd be awesome. I guess we'll just, we'll just have to wait and see what her final smash is going to be. It's actually kind of interesting. They haven't revealed all of them yet. But one they did reveal is for our final update for the week, which is day five, Thursday, where we got a co character overview for Wolf. And a description says, The leader of the Star Wolf mercenary team makes his grand return after 10 years. He puts his sharp goals to good use in wild attacks, and his final smash is an all-out attack by Team Star Wolf. If Fox or Falco are in the battle, you may hear a unique line of dialogue. And I love those touches. That's such a good di idea. So it makes it makes perfect sense that Wolf just has the final same final smash as Fox and Falco. Yeah. Just with Star Wolf. But that's still like, hey, maybe we'll actually get to see Leon and Pigma and all that in during that sequence. I think she says has a few things to say about Wolf. <laughs> I, have, I have way too many things to say. <laughs> I'll try to I'll try to make one point and let you guys talk on it because I'll just keep going forever. But I think like the biggest thing for me is that Wolf was my character in Brawl. Like I absolutely loved the character. And then when Wii U came out, there was so many things that I was like, oh, I wish, like if they're going to bring back any characters, it shouldn't be that one. And where's Wolf? And I just kept asking myself over and over again, where's Wolf? And then it got to the point where the DLC was starting to come out and you saw Roy and I was like, surely at this point we have <laughs> to have Wolf and nothing. So when he got announced for Smash Ultimate, I lost my mind. It's just, <laughs> it's been years. It's like yeah. seeing an old friend. How do you feel about the redesign too? Because they say it's from Star Fox Zero, but actually in one of your videos, you actually prove it's not entirely true. I do love it. I think it's a heck of a lot better than it was in Brawl. I think Brawl's looks a little bit strange. Because, like, w with Brawl, it's it's based off of the assault design, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, it looks like he has, like, a puffer vest. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, he's, he's rocking the Marty McFly. Yeah, That's that. right. <laughs> and he's also got the, the, you know, cybernetic visor, or, I'm sorry, uh, eye patch and everything. And it kind of, like, mitigates the, the gruffness of the design. And so, this one, it's kind of like a good... A medium between what it was in Brawl and what it is in Star Fox Zero, and I think it looks great. It's a, certainly an improvement, if anything. I like also how his um, his hair kind of moves into his uh, his nose now, because in Brawl they have they separated the two, where it's now just like one direct shade down the model, and it makes it look a little bit more symmetrical too, which is um, something I think they've been going for a bit more with these characters. I like that. I just love the fact that it's a regular eye patch, and I just I love all the little details that they added too, like the like the bandana around his leg and stuff. It kind of looks like he's like uh, storied a bit, you know. Mm -hmm. Like there's a reason for that. It, so it's got he's got a little bit of history on his character design in this one too. Honestly, I love the jacket. <laughs> that I don't know what it is, but that that purple jacket just works on him, and he has this. It's it's amazing how even with that like. With that on, he still look, looks way more threatening than he ever did in Brawl. Mm -hmm. uh, like, there's just Absolutely. no comparison here. Here, and I enjoyed Wolf, but I didn't play him a whole lot. I was just, he's a little different for me. But I can only imagine just how excited you were when you saw everybody is here, and you're like, oh god, does that mean Wolf too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Pretty much that's what I was saying the entire time. Like they were showing all the other characters after that that little blurb, and I was like, "Where's Wolf? Where's Wolf?" And when it finally happened, I was like, "Thank you." Because he's like the last one, right? Uh, it's, it's him and Mega Man, I think, were the last two. Very close to the end, yeah. And I was like, "Oh, thank goodness." <laughs> so you're in the same situation as Ash, because he was like, "Where's Mega Man? Where's Mega Man?" <laughs> yeah, with him. <laughs> um, yeah, and another thing too. Um, because of something you mentioned earlier about how his design isn't quite what it was from Star Fox Zero. In Star Fox Zero, it's a lot harder to see what his design was because you only got small glimpses of him inside the cockpit. But what it's supposed to look like in Star Fox Zero is like a zipped up, almost looks like a suit, like a onesie almost, uh, that's colored dark red. And if you look at the jacket in this redesign for Smash Ultimate, sure, it's purple, but you can see these lines that travel across the uh, the ends or the inside of the jacket. That's actually, that is a callback to the Star Fox Zero design because there was yellow stripes that went down the jacket. Oh. So it looks like it's an open version of the jacket that he was wearing in, in Zero. That's awesome. So I think for players who have not played as Wolf before, like maybe you didn't play Brawl, I think he's one of the more interesting uh, clone kind of echoey characters. 
because he, he does, his moveset is basically based off Fox, and obviously there's also Falco as well, but they've mi mixed up enough to make it feel unique. Like, his uh, his side B sort of goes in a upward arc now, rather than um, Fox's sort of straightforward one. Mm. And when you compare this to like all of the characters based off Marth or, or other characters like that, I think Wolf just stands out so much more. He just feels really unique, even, even if his moveset is still based off another character. Yeah, and his blaster has more of a stun effect than Fa Falco, correct? That's right. It, and actually, all of his moves have inherently different properties than Fox, if you if you go like side-by-side -side comparison. So like with his dash attack, for example, with Fox, it would just kind of like he'd kind of go through the opponent and the opponent wouldn't move much. With Wolf, it's a pop-up. So like if you hit the opponent with it, it props him up into the air to allow you to do follow-up moves with aerials and stuff like that. I'll give you one more example, because I could go on for days. <laughs> <laughs> one more example is uh, his neutral air. You know, with Fox, he just sticks his leg out, and it, it can um, do a little bit of knockback, but it's, you know, it's really meant to like do spacing. Mm -hmm. But with Wolf, it's more of an aggressor move, where, like, he kind of spins into the opponent, and so, like, you can kind of, like, rack up damage. You can also cross up the opponent, because it's not going to knock them anywhere. And that's just the surface. Like, every single one of his moves does something very different from Fox. So, like, as far as clone characters go, it's like you can tell where... The, the base was, but like everything that it does for each individual move is different. I can see us like playing Squad Strike and all of us choose like a bunch of different characters and she says it's just like Wolf, Wolf, Wolf and Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Not too far off. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you bring that up, John, because ah. we actually got a bit of a clarification on Squad Strike uh, as well this week. Uh, and did you want to, since you did the update, did you want to tell us about that? Sure, so the Nintendo Power podcast, um, we're talking a little bit about it. So this has kind of been a mode that they did talk about in the Direct, but people weren't really clear about what it was. So what it essentially is, is you think, think like a tag fighter, like Marvel vs. Capcom, where you choose a bunch of different characters and then you face off against another bunch of characters. So in Squad Strike, you can either choose um, teams of three or teams of five, and each character is essentially a stock. So if you lose one stock, you then don't respawn as that character, you respawn as another character. So it's a really interesting different take on Smash, and it's something we were actually asking for quite a bit prior to the Direct, like especially Andre, he was very uh, adamant that this made it into the game. And we've kind of had it in the past, like Subspace Emissary uh, had a few stages and boss battles where you play as different characters and then you go on to the next one, and so did Smash Run as well. So yeah, this has been something that has sort of been in Smash in the past but never as a proper dedicated fighting mode. I'm very excited for this. I'm not sure how you guys feel, but it's something I've wanted for a while. This is such a good idea. <laughs> it's yeah. such a good idea. It was, it's something we talked about at length before, and it always, seemed like, it always seemed like it'd be a lot of fun, really change things up. I think the confusion was whether it was going to be all in one match, which is, is what it is, or mm -hmm. if it was going to go like back to the screen like five one-on-one -on -one matches and after like that stock or two stocks are gone then you go back to the screen choose the next or then it goes like to another stage and does the next one and i never thought it was that so i'm not quite sure how it became a prevalent thought yeah. but it was good it's good that nintendo actually clarified and made sure, yeah. made sure people understood to be clear yeah they um they said it's one continuous match and they specified this a few times so there's not really any doubt about what it is and I think there were some translations from Sakurai that people maybe misinterpreted, but this does seem to be the official word now. This is an official Nintendo of America uh, employee telling us about this mode, so it seems pretty legit. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's great, but there is one concern I have, which uh -huh. is, is it going to replace Smash Tour? No, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> <laughs> God, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. No, but seriously, like, how many of you guys have had friends that said, like, oh, I like to play as all the characters, or I feel like I'm pretty good at all characters, and I think that this mode is really going to speak to the jack-of-all-trade players that never really had a chance to shine, because so often they would pick, like, another character they, they were really good with, but not quite as honed in as the guy that always plays his Bayonetta every single day of his life, you know? So when there's a force on your back to, to explore the roster, I think that it's going to open up an avenue for a lot of players that actually use a multitude of characters, obviously. Myself included, so I'm really, really excited about it. And if you really want to know what my team's going to be, it's going to be Wolf, Little Mac, Fox, Ness, and... and and Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, hopefully K. Rule. Yeah. yeah. No, Ridley. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it'd be really cool to have, like, one team full of heroes and one team full of villains. That'd be awesome. Ooh, we can actually do that Absolutely. in this game, too. Yeah. We're finally getting some villains. Speaking of concerns, though, one of my concerns is that this won't be online. Because if you look at mm. Smash for Wii U, all you could really do was battles for fun or battles for glory. And if it's the same here, then maybe this won't be present online, and that would be a real shame if that happens. Yeah, that's, I can almost see them doing that, <laughs> honestly. Though I should, it, I'm almost certain that it's going to be improved in a lot of ways. Maybe we won't get this mode, which would be a shame, but like I think so much there, there's so much room to improve the online uh, component of Smash Brothers. Even though the last one was still really great, I thought that at least the option of playing competitively as a, as a singular um, uh, mode is amazing, but let's just be honest with ourselves, no matter what they end up going with, it's gotta be better, because that seems to be the, the trend that they're going with yeah. here. <sighs> Fingers crossed, that's all I gotta yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> We're going back to Brawls Online. Yeah. Oh, no. Everyone is here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, we're not quite done yet, even though that's it for all the updates for the, to the blog this week. We also have, as always, our Patreon question. As, as always, you guys can support us uh, on Patreon for just $1 a month. Get the, our podcast, uh, Real Talk, three days early every Friday, as well as offer up uh, questions for that, as well as a question for this, and, of course, access to our Discord. But this week, our question comes from James Gregson, who says... With the announcement of a Super Smash Bros. version of the Pro Controller, I have decided to drop the GameCube controller entirely. Will any of the GX crew be doing the same? And I thought that was kind of interesting, because we did get to see the reveal of uh, the Special Edition, which does come with a uh, Smash-branded Pro Controller as well. And you can get that individually and all that stuff. And, you know, back in the day, I, I couldn't conceive going away from the GameCube controller because it just felt so perfect and it still feels really perfect but whenever I grab Smash footage for small videos and whatnot I don't really bother hooking up the GameCube controller because I'm just like I just need quick footage to get that used to that but I, I can sort of see myself getting used to the controls on the Pro Controller if I needed to but I'm probably still going to mostly play on the GameCube. Yeah, um, the Pro Controller in my time with the demo had some really nice HD rumble feedback. Like whenever you punch someone, there's this very light little um, buzz that you can kind of feel. And you'd, you'd, you'd miss that with the GameCube controller, I think. But at the same time, here in the UK, our Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Limited Edition comes with the game, a GameCube adapter, and a GameCube controller. So. I can't really get away from that, because the box that it comes in is really nice. <laughs> I don't want to lose that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, the Pro Controller looks amazing, though. Like, I love the white handles, and in comparison, the GameCube controller is a little bit simple. Like, they've just kind of taken away the logo and put a Smash icon in the middle. Yeah, that's pretty much yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. It's beautiful looking, to be honest with you. I, I mean, like, I may not use it for Smash, but I would definitely use it in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's sort of how I feel. And, like, it's, uh, I mean... If I want to answer, I, I know that I'm not part of the GX crew. <laughs> well, no, no, you are right now, honorary honorary member right now. <laughs> I'm so honored. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, I, I think that, it, it, like, uh, for a moment there, I was going to say, what does the Pro Controller offer that the GameCube controller doesn't already? But you already mentioned one second ago, John, about the rumble feedback, which is actually really cool. So, like, I now I want to try it out and see if that's something that I may want to just adapt to, just so I can enhance the experience, despite the fact that it's not going to help me play any better. But outside of that, why would you ever go outside of what you know? Yeah. Mm, right? Yeah. And it's always really cool to have, like, a brand new GameCube controller that was just manufactured. I've used the Smash Bros. for Wii U one. Like, that's, that's my primary GameCube controller. I use it all the time. Mm. And, yeah, it'd just be awesome to have another one. Because you can never have too many GameCube controllers. No, never. <laughs> I, have, I have nine, literally. Well, yeah, now you'll have ten. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have four, but one's a third-party controller, so if I get this one, that'll be, give me up to four first-party controllers, so maybe I should get that. <laughs> yeah, definitely a good investment right there. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, like, I have four WaveBirds, and then I have the rest are GameCube controllers. Some work better than others, that's why I ended up with nine. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I've noticed a few of my Z buttons going out on a couple of them. One thing I'm wondering is whether we'll get any uh, Smash-branded Joy-Con. Because we have the Pro Controller, yeah. we have the GameCube Controller. Maybe we'll get something like a little Smash logo on the side, or... I, I, I can't really think of a, a color theme for Smash, because so far 
the Joy-Con have all been different colours for Special Edition. Like, Arms had yellow, Splatoon was neon. I can't really think what I'd give Smash. Maybe, like, mm. just pure black. Because that's kind of what the logo is at the moment. And we have grey, but we don't have proper, just, like, sleek black. That would look pretty yeah. cool, but... I, yeah, I can't think of Smash. Yeah, I, I doubt we're going to get a Joy-Con controller for Smash. Yeah, I mean, I've only put this much thought into designing Joy-Con controllers, and that is I want either a burger one where it's two buns um, <laughs> oh, nice. that'd be great or Kur or kirby where it's like the the right side is his eyes and like the top part of his mouth and the left side is just the feet and um the bottom part of his mouth oh, that would have been oh perfect for star allies like ah, oh, just like a pure pink joy con of all that that'd be oh, so nice i love it yeah. <laughs> i want it i want it <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. Well, thank you very much for the question, James. And I think that pretty much covers it for uh, this week. So, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And, of course, be sure to subscribe to Game Explain for more Orange uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and other things gaming. And before I cut out, actually, she says, where can we find you at? You can find me on the YouTubes. Uh, just type in Boundary Break on your search engine. I know you're looking at it right now, so go for it. And uh, you can find my show Boundary Break, where I search for uh, developer techniques and unused content in video games by manipulating the camera. Very cool. It's a great series. Definitely check it out. But uh, until then, we'll, guys, we'll catch you guys next week for uh, the next weekly roundup. Till then, guys. Bye.